Okay. Um, I just want to read from um, from Deuteronomy chapter six. These verses we have already read through, um, but just want since we are going to be, uh, we are, since we are studying about parenting and family and children and so on, I thought it'd be good for us to look at these um, script, these verses again. That is Deuteronomy chapter six and uh, verses four till nine. Deuteronomy six starting from verse 4, says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So here, <clears throat> God is giving um, Israel an instruction, uh, the people of Israel, and um, it's it's very simple uh, and uh, very significant at the same time, saying, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul. Um, and um, these words, uh, which I'm commanding you today, shall be in your heart. Okay, so saying, first of all, first and foremost, um, for you who are hearing this, uh, the words that I'm commanding, which will be in your heart, and you shall, and he goes on to say, okay, this is what you shall do, and it involves the family. It involves the children, it involves the family. So, um, so we see that God's word, God's instructions, yes, they are for us primarily as individuals, but um, as we move into a season, uh, you know, as parents, as spouse and parents, um, well, the Lord's instruction um, and the scope of that instruction extends to the spouse and family. Right? So he says, you shall teach them, and uh, you shall talk about them, and you shall, you know, let it be a visible, let there be a visible reminder uh, to the entire family. So, meaning, um, you know, this is your responsibility. You do this, and uh, let it be there for everyone, and uh, let the whole family come under um, uh, the blessing, come under the the protection, uh, come and experience uh, and have an encounter with the Word of God. Um, with God himself. So that's God's intention um, and that's God's plan for the family, right? So, um, so yeah, so let's pray <clears throat> and uh, and pray that we will be such a people that we will uh, not only for ourselves but also for our families that will be representatives. You know, many times when, we, when it comes to family, when it comes to, um, you know, taking up this uh, place in our family, um, maybe, I don't know, we sometimes hesitate, we sometimes hold back, but uh, it need not be so, and it should not be so, because this is God's plan, right? Okay, so let's uh, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for these words that we just read. Thank you for this reminder, God, that, um, yes, Father God, first and foremost, our relationship, our encounter, God, our walk is with you, and maybe never neglect that. And secondly, Lord, you have instructed us, Lord, to be teachers, Lord, to be um, or those instruments, God, uh, to be people who will share, who will teach, who will talk about what you've done for us and what you've instructed us. And in our families, Lord, with our children, with the spouse. And Father, we pray that, um, that it will be so. May it be for each one of us, uh, a natural overflow, Lord. a very natural overflow, Father God. And I just pray for, Lord, homes where it is not, and I pray that you bring us to that place. Yes, Lord, remove everything that needs to be removed. Let there be a release of healing. Let there be a breakdown of barriers. Let there be a breakdown of whatever is withholding. Lord, from coming to that place, because this is your plan and purpose. This is your design for family. 
for marriage and family. And so, God, we we pray that it will be so. We thank you, and uh, we give you all the praise and glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, so last class, uh, you know, we, we were looking at parenting, and we saw how, uh, you know, being parents, uh, I mean, children are not in, inconvenient, uh, or, um, you know, they're not some, some, uh, you know, someone to be endured. Um, well, it's God's plan, it's God's design uh, for godly offspring, and therefore we need to really embrace that role and responsibility. Right, as parents. So we saw that uh, as parents, we need to embrace, first and foremost, embrace that role and responsibility. And secondly, um, definitely we are the role models uh, because they are we are the ones they look up to and uh, they learn from. They're watching us very closely, following our every footstep. Um, and uh, yeah, more than our words, uh, our actions definitely speak louder. And so they are watching and uh, they are, you know, receiving everything so that is the thing then also um, we saw that uh, uh, we need to intentionally train right train our children i think this verse is very very uh, crucial that we we talk about um, values we talk about principles we, and uh, we also address behavior so we train the child to train the children in the way they should go uh, so that they will not depart from it so that they will walk in it and it will stay with them. It will do them good uh, all the days of their lives. So, so we want to, it's as a way of preparing our children for the world. It is to, it is to train them in righteousness. It is to train them in the ways of God. Right? So, and also, you know, it's, it's various other things also in life skills. We train them in, uh, um, you know, in, in spiritual matters uh, and also attitude and, and communication and also so values principles disciplines um, and also life skills and also uh, we address character behavior attitude so all these things um, you know as parents so we don't have to wait um, or you know say no that is the school's responsibility or that is the church's responsibility um, you know to take care of those things or or to say that you know I'm not equipped. Uh, many times we don't do it because we are not walking in it ourselves, right? Or you know we are not equipped ourselves. So the thing is to to get equipped to to put it in practice um, because we need to be uh, good examples and to train and teach our children. So we don't have we should not uh, give up this responsibility just because you know we don't see it in our lives. So the the the, uh, the correct approach is to is to put it in our lives, put to practice in our own lives, and teach our children. Right. So as we uh, as children grow up, we also saw that uh, you know they go through different stages, and um, in all these stages, let me just share the uh, PowerPoint. In all these stages, we we see that um, well, it is. Uh, 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 it it requires a different a level of skill it requires a different level of uh, engagement and uh, involvement rather so the way we engage with uh, a toddler someone who is uh, you know two years old or five years old four years old is not the same way we would be involved or engaged in an adolescent you know obviously right so because they've grown up they are able to do several things on their own, and uh, some things they are still dependent. So our it's only natural that our the way we engage, the way we are involved in their lives, you know, changes. Right? So <clears throat> we also, you know, there are changes. We grow up, we change. Uh, along with our children, you know, along with the way they grew up, uh, we change. So we saw some of those things that uh, you know we could be nurturing, caring. We are as a playmate. We are guiding them uh, in, in their childhood years. Right? When they go to their preschool years, we are still you know uh, very much involved and and playing and guiding. But we are there's more of instructing. And now um, there's also a need for disciplining, right? Because they are trying out boundaries, pushing those boundaries. So there's need for disciplining. Uh, there's a need to be, uh, you know, 
put down those uh, boundaries and say, okay, pay expectations, and also bring in, be a little more authoritative uh, and saying, okay, yes to things at the same time, no to certain things, and so on. So that is required. And when they get into the <clears throat> sorry, the, the the teen years, the adolescent years. Then we are more of a we are there as a, you know a teammate. We are participating. Um, yes, there is a fair bit of disciplining also, but we are encouraging them and giving them responsibilities, um, empowering them to do certain things. You know, maybe they certain take on certain tasks like maybe buying things, um, and taking certain chores in the house. They have responsibilities. Maybe that's uh, maybe they are you know, get them to cook certain things, get them to take care of uh, you know clearing the trash um, and uh, you know arranging things in the house or uh, washing uh, several responsibilities that uh, they take up and if they don't then again you know we reason with them find out why um, there's also disciplining if there's willful you know willful uh, disobedience um, disciplining would be you know disciplining also would change through these years right? that is something that we need to understand it's no more of uh, you know, uh, uh, maybe a spanking or anything. It's it's uh, now when they're in the adolescent years. So, um, so it's more of sitting and reasoning, and uh, disciplining also would be maybe um, you know curtailing certain privileges, right? Um, withdrawing certain, so, I'm sorry, certain privileges. Um, so that would be a way of uh, disciplining. Right? Then they move into. The young adult years and then adult years and and so so the parents are more of coaches or mentors and uh, uh, and working with them discussing things taking uh, you know um, collective uh, participative decisions uh, and and so on right so it's interesting how as parents we also change through the years and as parents how are um, the way we relate to our children also needs to change you know the problem happens when um when we relate to them the same way when we say when you fuss over them and of course you know, as parents uh, it's it's only natural that we sometimes we just consider them as as four-year-olds or five-year-olds or you know we are still protective we are still uh, so involved in their lives and so on uh, it's only natural that we feel that way but then there is that aspect of letting go, right? and it could be scary. Oh, my child, you know, will he or she cope up, manage? But it's a way of preparing them, preparing our children for the world, uh, also, right? With with uh, giving them sufficient freedom, um, giving them the responsibility, and uh, so that they uh, they they realize their capabilities. They realize, okay, this is what their strengths are, they discover their strength. Um, they come to a place of confidence uh, in the world. And right? so it's very, it, 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 very important that we, our, our involvement, our engagement changes over the years. Um, um, yeah, so that's, uh, it, it's, it's quite important that we do that. Right? Now, as they go through these transitions uh, in, in these, uh, as they are growing up, um, as teenagers, also, you know, this for some parents, the teenage years, or, or let's say, dealing with in the teenage years, they find it very challenging, right? Uh, because as teenagers, uh, the children are not quite, um, they've come out of their pre adolescent years. There's a lot of discovery. There's a lot of changes that's happening. Um, you know, changes physiologically, emotionally. Um, uh, all those changes are happening, and therefore they are going through a stage. And and if we, it's good as parents that we are equipped, uh, and it's also uh, as parents that we understand whatever they are going through. Right. They are they are discovering their hormone hormones are um, you know uh, kicking in and they, um, they are they suddenly find uh, the opposite gender you know attractive and uh, and, uh, and all that right and along with this discovery also comes 
certain temptations and addictions and so on. So they, they really need that firmness. At the same time, the flexibility and the freedom uh, uh, in the right way, with the right boundaries, right? So, so it's um, it, it, they would need uh, uh, you know uh, the right parenting. So, as parents, we need to understand that. Right? So, when it comes to um, um, you know teenagers, um, let me just uh, check the slide once again. Just a minute. Yeah, so we are look, we're going to look at the disciplining in a bit. But when it comes to teenagers, we, we need to understand that, um, yeah, teenagers could go through a rebellious phase, uh, you know, a defiance. And they say that, um, okay, don't tell me what to do. Okay, don't tell me uh, how I should be. Don't then tell me what I should wear. You know, uh, I'll do that. So they are actually uh, kind of learning to take charge. They are learning to um, take control. They are learning to walk in independence. But it can be perceived as uh, rebellion by us, right? if you don't understand. Uh, well, maybe they are at certain points, but not always. So this is what they are trying to do: establish their freedom, trying to you know think independently, act independently, um, because they are able to do that. Right? They've come to that stage of um, maybe traveling on their own or making certain decisions on their own, uh, doing things for themselves on their own. So they're not dependent. So, so in wanting to communicate that independence, they might they might sound uh, defiant or rebellious. So we need to understand. It could be incorrectly perceived at times as defiance, but this is what they are going through. right? Um, and also, they do not want to sometimes, um, well, always listen to what we are saying, instructing, and but they rather would uh, want to, uh, you know, want to, uh, go with what their the peer group is saying, you know. But my friends are doing this. My friends are having this kind of a hairstyle. My friends, you know, this is what everyone does. This is how we carry our books to college. You know, this is how we do it. Um, we don't want to take lunch. It looks very old-fashioned. I'd rather eat in the cafe, you know, with my friends. I don't want to take a packed lunch, and and so many other things. Like, right? um, so. Um, so you know all these things are happening so what are they actually going through they want to conform they want the approval of their peers okay um they wanted to be accepted so that is what they're going through they want approval acceptance and a teenage year at years are uh, typically that but even as they establish their identity um, they want approval and acceptance and they while they are independent and um, uh, at the same time they don't want to really stand out and be very different you know um, they want to be creative they want to be uh, individualistic at the same time uh, do not want to stand out um, so you know all this is happening it's a very uh, you know sometimes it's a very paradoxical kind of a stage right they want this as well as that um, so, so we, as parents, we need to kind of remind you know when in, when wanting acceptance and acceptance and wanting the approval. Um, well, that is fine, but at the same time, as parents, we remind that yes, there are certain values. Um, there's something called the truth, which is based on the word of God, and so we're not going to compromise on that. Yes, you know you can do this we can be have individual expression etc but not at the cost of compromising on truth right so we kind of establish that communicate that they might be they might come across as uh, very very opinionated because they want to uh, uh, they want to establish that yes i want to be heard i want to i'm an individual i'm uh, i'm a i'm a person of my own 
I think on my own, so I want to be heard. These are my thoughts, these are my likes, these are my dislikes. This is what I think. Right? So, um, so they're reaching that stage, and it's a good stage. Right? Um, at the same time, uh, we might think, okay, uh, you know, because they are disagreeing with things, uh, or the way it is always done, because they are questioning, you know, why why should we do that? Why should we do this? You know, uh, why should I attend? You know, that typically happens uh, when we when we tell our you know um, uh, children who are the teenage years when we when parents tell tell them, okay, we need to go to this attend this family dinner or. Uh, we need to go together. We've been invited here, or we need to go for this wedding. Um, no, I don't want to come. You know, that's a typical response. I don't know anybody there. I don't want to come. But uh, the whole family, you know, um, has been invited, and the whole family uh, is expected. Uh, but they say, no, I, I don't want to come. I don't want to be there. Uh, so they are kind of establishing their independence. But at the same time, we need to remind them of family values, family commitments. Uh, so certain things, it's OK. You know, it doesn't matter. We don't have to insist on each and everything. and We don't have to major on some of the minor things. Say, OK, that's fine. That's OK. But uh, also, we need to be careful to establish um, and make sure, establish the truth and make sure that th those things are not Compromise values are not compromised. Um, integrity is not compromised. Truth is not compromised. Right. So those are things we need to understand uh, when they go through this phase. Okay. So let's look at uh, you know when we look at disciplining. Okay. Uh, so that's a very important aspect. You know there could be uh, different ways of uh, disciplining a child. Disciplining is also part of parenting. So when we think of the word disciplining. Um, you know, it sometimes it evokes a very, let's say, maybe a negative thing in our minds. Um, and the reason could be, okay, this is how I was disciplined. Right? This is how maybe we were disciplined, and it was harsh. It was painful. It broke us. Um, it took away our dignity, maybe. You know, um, this is how we were disciplined, and uh, it probably uh, it was very traumatic. Right, the way we were disciplined. Um, but we need to know, understand that discipline is important. Uh, our disciplining is important, but it should be done in a way which does not shame, which does not break, which does not destroy the person. Okay, the Lord disciplines us. The Lord chastens us because we are His children. Right, but it it's not to destroy us. It is actually to make us better. Right. Um, let's look at these scriptures. Ephesians 6 verse 4, parents do not treat your children in such a way as to make them angry. Instead, raise them with Christian discipline. Raise them up with Christian discipline and instruction. Colossians 3.21, parents don't come down too hard on your children or you'll crush their spirits. And Colossians 3.21, it, it says that no, do not exasperate your children. Okay. So you're crushing them, crushing their individuality, destroying, uh, you know, their confidence. Maybe they don't, they don't feel, you know, they don't feel like doing things anymore on their own anymore. They're like, uh, you know, constantly they're second guessing everything. You know, that means that uh, we have actually destroyed something in them, destroyed their confidence, destroyed their. Uh, you know their their ability to do certain things. Now that is not the purpose of discipline, and that is that is not the right way to discipline. Probably we were disciplined that way, uh, but maybe you know our parents. Of course, nobody is a perfect parent. But, uh, the mistakes that our parents made, uh, we should not pass on, right? Because kids are also learning, and they they would discipline their kids the same way. So we don't want to pass on to the next generation. Right, some of the mistakes that uh, that happened to us, we don't want to pass on. So, yeah. So uh, the first thing to understand, to remember, is that uh, discipline should be kept positive. Okay. Um, well, maybe at us, you know, and also discipline is like we said, you know, when they are in different stages of childhood, uh, just at different uh, stages of growth, uh, discipline is different. Right. Maybe when they are, you know, maybe five years, six years, preteens, uh, you know, maybe five years, six years, and 
you know, throwing a tantrum. You go to a shop and and they are pestering and they say, I want it, I want it, I want it. And they're crying and, you know, throwing a tantrum and falling on the ground and rolling on the ground and, you know, stamping their feet and, and shouting out. And you now that, that would require a, a strong intervention. Right? That would require uh, the parent really you know, stopping them and saying and being a little firm. Uh, so, you know, that is, uh, and, and being told to, you know, stop it. You know, I don't want you to cry right now. Keep quiet, right? Um, or maybe, you know, they are, they're holding on to some toy and they're saying, I want it. You know, it requires that us taking that and putting it back and saying, no, you have enough toys. I'm not going to buy it. Uh, so it is, uh, you know, it requires that at that stage. But, you know, at a different stage, maybe they want to go somewhere and stay out uh, beyond those, you know, times that you have actually permitted, which is safe for them. Uh, so disciplining would be different. You know, if they cross that line, then it would be different. It would, it would mean that, okay, uh, yeah, you, you're not doing that. Next time, you know, I'm not permitting you. And because you cross this time, you know, that thing that you were talking about, that place that you wanted to go with your friends, and you said that you, you know, this time there's no permission to do that. You know, let's skip it, right? Because you did not keep up this your word with this. Let's skip that. Uh, and so, so discipline is withdrawal of certain rights and privileges, right? Um, maybe the, the the use of their phone or laptop. Maybe you you saw them, you know, watching something. They say they're not supposed to, and you already told them, warned them, and then that means that you are withdrawing the, you know, the, the disciplining act would be to withdraw some of the things that uh, that maybe they don't have access to their phones after, you know, after uh, sundown. Maybe they don't have, or they are supposed to, they, they, you know, watch whatever they need to watch in the living room where everybody is. And not in the privacy of their, you know, wherever they are, I mean, in, in the bedroom, or uh, you know, so so those kind of things, right? So keep discipline, disciplining act positive. Okay, um, what are positive ways of disciplining? Okay, explaining right and wrong and and consequences, um, loss of certain privileges, enforcing timeouts, like for the smaller ones. You know, okay, timeout. You need to be here and uh, stop whatever you're doing. And once you're feeling better, once you're, uh, you know, once you're okay to talk about this, um, then it's fine. Till then, it's time out. You'll be in this corner, and then we'll talk when you're okay. When you settle down, uh, when you stop crying, and uh, you know, when you stop shouting, screaming, then we'll talk. So timeouts. Um, also, um, you know, so this is this can be a uh, disciplining. Uh, the the when you when you say it, uh, make it positive. It can be you know it, it can be something that they are, for them also. It's a kind of learning that they learn something, and uh, so we can do it in a loving way, in a firm way, um, in a positive way. Right. So second thing is for us to understand that. Um, um, that in the in wanting to discipline, don't break the relationship as parent and child. Like in wanting to enforce discipline or bring about discipline or bring about correction, uh, let the relationship be meaningful, be strong. Because uh, and only through that, with that relationship, um, can we discipline. Right. So we, we need to have that relationship. Uh, we need to continue to engage with them, communicate with our children, um, and be involved in their lives. You know, sometimes uh, the children want to talk. The children want us to participate in what they're doing. Maybe watch something with them. Maybe go to some place with them. And uh, well, maybe you know it. It requires the parents to make time. It requires the parent to yeah set apart time. Maybe the parent is also parents are also busy and working, and well, it requires um, 
you know, setting up our prioritizing uh, this and saying, okay, I will, I will do this. I will attend the school program. I will, or this, um, this particular program that you are in, this performance that you are in. I will take time out. I will come and I will attend and be there. You know, to be engaged. Maybe the books that they're reading, maybe the shows that they are watching, and you know, to be there to talk about it, to to be engaged in their lives. So the child also feels that yes, my parents are involved in their lives. They are interested in me, uh, in my life, in what I do. Okay. Because uh, the child should not come to a place of saying, "Oh, my, my parents don't care what I do, uh, you know, where I am. They don't care. They don't. They don't care about me." Right? Um, also, boundaries. Boundaries. When we set boundaries, um, it needs to be clear. It needs to be consistent. It needs to be understood. It needs to be communicated. Well, many times, uh, boundaries are not communicated. You know, we have it in our own mind, saying, "Okay." Uh, I will allow this, I will disallow this. But that has not been communicated to the child. So the, every time the child is like, oh, I didn't know. And it's a genuine, I didn't know. right? Um, so we need to uh, make sure that it is communicated and, and understood. Because many times you'll say, no, but, but I thought, you know, we, we did this, especially if they're teen teenagers or, you know, but I thought we did this, but, I, you know, how come you get to do this and I don't do it? You know, I should not. Right? How come you get to eat this, and I, I you know, I, I should not? And so uh, the child needs to understand. Um, so it has to be communicated well, and it has to, uh, for example, you know, even staying up late and so on. So they might say, you know, but you, you're not, you're not uh, you know, sleeping right now. Why should I go to bed? Uh, these are the, typically what the kids would say, you know, and they need to know that this is the bit time for them because they need to get up early they need to go to school or you know college or wherever so they need to uh, have those bedtimes and that is why you know we are asking them to do it so boundaries communicated make sure they understand right and um, then with um, the next thing is um, increasing the responsibility when they are mature when they grow up um, so gradually we give up, you know, controlling, uh, I mean, we're not controlling all the time, but we uh, give up our level of involvement, right? And, uh, but we are also involved in their lives, right? So we're not, we're not saying I'm, I'm not going to be involved, you know, a parent should never be at uh, that place where the parent is saying, uh, I'm not involved in a child's life. Right. right, they've grown up, so they can do whatever they want. You know that doesn't happen. They're always involved. They're always engaged, but the level of involvement changes. Right, so as they grow up, as they, you know, uh, uh, take on responsibilities, their responsibilities also can in increase in the house. What they need to do, and so on. And and um, yeah, the the most important thing is this that when it involves parents to discipline the child. It should not be like one parent um, is disciplining and the other parent is actually against that disciplining. You know, if that happens. So the parents need to be in agreement, come to a place of agreement, saying, if our child does not adhere to these, you know, these standards, then let's do this. Let's withhold certain things. Let these this will be the consequence. Okay, so when the parents um, are in agreement, then the child also understands. Yes, it's something serious. You know, both my parents are saying the same thing. They are, it's it's something serious. It's something important. So I better follow. But when the child notices that one is for, the other one is against, then the child would could very well manipulate that. You know, children are master manipulators. So they would. They would go to the parent who is uh, easygoing and uh, not really enforcing, not really strict about things, and then they would get their way with them, you know, play on their emotions and say, and then go to the other parent and say, but then daddy already said, you know, mommy already said, I asked mommy, mommy said, okay, why are you not saying okay? Yeah. So to be in a, a place of uh, agreement. So whenever when it comes to certain things, you know, I'd say, this is what we say, you know, we'll check and let you know, we'll let you know. We'll discuss, but we'll let you know. Sometimes they come to, you know, at a, 
at a place when uh, you're doing things to, you know you're busy and then uh, and then they ask okay can i go here can i do this can i do this uh, and uh, you know that those are the times when you say okay uh, i will check and let you know you know when it comes to permissions same way with um, you know disciplining also it could it's good to for the parents to discuss and talk and say okay if this and this happens you know this is our way of disciplining okay so um so to be parents to be in agreement right okay so parenting styles when we look at parenting styles you know it uh, sometimes falls under these slots or these um, four categories okay um maybe we can we can in fact think about our own the way our, our own parents we can actually identify the way our own parents uh, um, dealt with us or engaged with us right one it could be very authoritarian when you say authoritarian it means a lot of rules a uh, lot of demands but when it came to relationship it was either you know it was negligible or just barely there right but it was rules approval was uh, acceptance based on how obedient you were to the rules right so it was based on performance and how uh, you adhere to the rules right so what happens is uh, it results in a lot of uh, resentment uh, the child resents the parents because there's been no sitting down and talking and sharing of hearts and sharing of thoughts it has been okay these are the rules obey it okay no questions asked why because it is so because i said it right very authoritarian so sometimes it also results in the child uh, you know emotionally uh, breaking losing confidence uh, in oneself in one's ability um, being getting discouraged lack of self esteem and so on so you know a very authoritarian always and also sometimes the other end you know completely rebelling once they come out of that uh, authoritarian uh, environment you know, totally coming becoming rebellious going the other way extreme i could not do the things there you know I, now i will and totally resenting the parents for the what they did um the second one would be authoritative okay so what do we mean by that that means that you are still firm about boundaries limits uh standards but along with those rules there is also a very strong relationship so rules with relationship okay so involving being involved with the child loving you know like we said as parents we need to love our child as uh, our children unconditionally because that is how you know the, the our our heavenly father relates to us right so he's the example for you know, ultimately for all parenting so he's a, that's how he relates to us so we need to relate the same way so we also uh, love them uh, love them unconditionally and uh, so there is there are rules there but there is also a relationship okay. the third one is a very permissive meaning it's a very uh, with regard to limits maybe there is uh, you know very few boundaries very few clear things um, but it's very permissive you know um almost no rules um uh, relationship is strong but there are no boundaries no expectations um there could be you know a very loving relationship very accepting relationship but there are no firm boundaries there are no standards so so what happens is when the child grows up and in, interacts uh, or in, in the course of Uh, you know growing up interacts with the the world outside maybe to school maybe in places where there is where there are rules where there are guidelines where, which needs to be uh, adhered to then they struggle there okay struggle in the workplace struggle in the you know because it was very permissive thing everything almost everything was granted everything was given you know the child also um, risks being totally pampered 
realize that that is not how it is in the outside world. So find it difficult to cope in all those settings, whether it's school, college, whether it's a workplace, and even in certain uh, other religion, when they get married and, and so on, um, they do not uh, understand rules, they do not want to keep rules, and so on. And so that's that could be an outcome of a very permissive uh, relationship. Right? Uh, uh, well, uh, not a very strong sense of what is right, what is wrong, right? so easily influenceable by whatever they like, uh, whatever catches their fancy. Um, and also the the discerning bit is not there because it's always a very permissible kind of environment. Okay. The fourth one is totally uninvolved parenting, okay, where the parent provides for the needs, but is totally aloof. Okay, the needs are taken care of. Maybe the fees are paid, you know, education fees, everything. Food is there on the table, clothing, whatever the needs are. It is there, but then the parents themselves, or the, or the parent, is disengaged, not involved. Um, the relationship is not there uh, in terms of communication, virtually non-existent, right? So, one, the child could learn to become very independent, very tough, because the child needs to do a lot of things by himself or herself. So, do that. Also, the possibility is that um, without that guidance, there is no sense of direction. Right? Without that, that communication, you know, um, that that thing of that assurance of being part of a family, belonging to a family, um, you know, is not there. So, so, so we have these four. Uh, types of uh, parenting or styles of parenting, and it, it and obviously, you know, we uh, even as we were looking at it, maybe we we realize okay, our parents were like like this, our parents were like that, but then um, uh, we need to parent our children in the best way possible, and uh, which means that there need to be rules, but there also needs to be a very strong relationship in communicating those rules and in enforcing. Right, and expecting the child to keep up those standards, right? So, okay, so as parents, we need to be in agreement. Okay, and the other thing uh, that we see is uh, no partiality when it comes to, you know, uh, when there are, you know, when there's, when there's, when there are children, you know, more than one child in the household, no partiality. Um, and then also, always appreciate affirm the respect of which child it is you know what is right what has been done right affirm good behavior right uh, encourage good behavior by by um, affirming good behavior so that so then when we encourage uh, by affirming the good thing then we we are actually uh, encouraging that it can be done again now, this is what is okay. so when we affirm or when we when we neglect uh, some bad behavior, something happens, and we and we, we, we don't really take a call on it. That means that it is it has every every chance to be repeated, right? So you're actually by our silence and by our uh, uninvolvement in that, uh, or you know just neglecting that, we are uh, in uh, unspoken words. What we are saying is okay. That that is okay. You know, we are actually communicating that it can be re repeated. It's okay to do it, right? Uh, but we, but in our minds, actually, you know, we know that it's not okay. But because we neglected it or we didn't address it, we are actually communicating that. So, so we need to, you know, affirm what is right, appreciate what is right, so that that can be a repeated behavior, lifestyle. Um, also, you know, on the same lines, uh, do not neglect when some wrong things and wrong habits, don't neglect it, don't be afraid to address it, right? handle it, address it in the initial time itself. Um, don't be argumentative, um, give yourself a time out, um, you know, don't get worked up, don't major on the minor things, um, always bring closure with love, uh, closure to maybe that 
that disciplining process itself uh, with love right? and the uh, relationship is very important okay so the um, you know as parents we are loving them we are providing for them and uh, we know that uh, it requires obedience from from the child right? uh, it requires obedience so we are teaching the child and uh, how to discipline i mean how to bring in discipline in their lives how to have priorities have to have uh, uh, we are equipping them training them uh, and so on and we need to you know communicate that okay it requires their obedience Okay, it requires the way you know it's not like we you can do what you want and uh, you know while we are we are, we are going to love unconditionally but we need to let them let the child know we need to let the children know that we require obedience and the disciplining is in love in firmness so that they would obey right so um, yeah, if there is any, um, you know, foolishness, uh, unthought of decisions by the child, behavior by the child, um, give wisdom right, in its place. Don't just say, oh, that was foolish, or oh, that was not right, uh, but also share the right thing. Okay, you know, this was a very careless thing that you did. Okay, also share what is the right thing. Right. Um, share wisdom, and several scriptures and proverbs talk about wisdom. Uh, proverbs ten one: A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. There is nothing but sadness and sorrow for parents whose children do foolish things. So when you say foolish things, we're talking about you know being careless, being wasteful, um, uh, taking, making impulsive decisions um, that have consequences. Um, maybe giving in to certain things that have consequences. So, um, so the, by the impartation of wisdom, sharing of wisdom, then we drive out all those foolishness. Right? So, so this is uh, for us as parents uh, in dealing with children. So, so when it comes to um, nurturing our children, Okay, um, I'll just probably, uh, you know, just address one thing and then we'll take a break. So, so in our home, we create an environment. We create an environment just like how there is a greenhouse and where plants, plants are growing up. We create an environment where it is conducive for their growth. So it, it is the responsibility of the parents to create that. An environment where they are where they are accepted, loved, an environment where there is peace, where there is joy, um, where there is where you don't have constant criticism. It's the responsibility of parents to create that environment, that environment, sorry, in the home and as the children are brought up. Okay, so we'll take a break now and then we'll we'll come back after the break. <laughs> 